Ralph here once again. It is 12.51 a.m. as usual, January 3rd, 2021. And what I did here is I pulled some interesting data together for us. What the healthdata.gov has begun to put together is they started putting together vaccine distribution charts, uh, but especially between the two different vaccines per se, the uh, Moderna, Moderna, and basically the F Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. And so what we basically did here was we basically compiled uh, the data frame and we combined both vaccines together. And what we're doing here is we're making the assumption, a big assumption, that the second dose is equal to the complete administration of the vaccine itself, assuming people are not hoarding vaccines off to the side someplace. And what we're looking at here in this particular chart, we're pulling together a bunch of different data sources. And so basically what we're looking at right here in this particular one is the number, total number of second dose vaccines delivered per the population. Not a percentage, just the general overall. And we'll follow this through the weeks. Now keep in mind this is scientific notation. So 0.5 actually means 5 millions as it basically correlated here with Alabama. And four means close to 40 million as correlated here with California. We'll get more into fun data analytics in a little bit. Let's get right into the very, very compelling research articles that came out this year questioning what we like to term weaponized uncertainty. And that weaponized uncertainty being, you know, lockdowns and masks. And this one, a lot of individuals are not going to like, but this is the way science goes. The 29th of December 2020 update alert number four came out. Look at all up where we go here. Come back to the beginning here. Look at all the updates we have here off to the side. And this is the fourth update alert. What this is basically trying to say is this. And this is in the Annals of Eternal Medicine and the links will be there for all of you to follow. Is it trying to imply not that masks do not work like a general rule. Everyone sees things as black and white. Once someone says a mask does not work, we're assuming masks don't work for anything. Of course they work for certain things. But do they work for SARS-CoV-2? And what they looked at is 739 citations. Their conclusion based upon the quality of the research is as follows. And here comes the Denmask study again. That they found out out of all of the 739 studies was probably one of the best good quality open label trials in reference to masks working not in a lab but in a general public setting with people touching their face nose eyes hair throwing masks on the ground so on and so forth with real world scenarios their conclusion in the dead mask study or of the Denmark study was as follows. It was a good quality trial. It made the news for about a half a second. Just enough time for a lot of the media to interject their publisher bias because they have selection bias issues or confirmation bias issues, but they're not really looking at data. And henceforth, that's what we do and our small little group and we review that. So basically the conclusion was as follows. Mask use versus no mask use was associated with a small non-statistically significant reduction in risk for SARS-CoV-2. Hence the words there can be spun to weaponize uncertainty. Now keep in mind non-statistically means it could be another factor involved such as hand washing, distancing, pure luck, so on and so forth. And keep, so basically, they're just not saying the mask has been proven to work. Uh, and they're not saying the mask has been proven not to work. They're just saying in this case of SARS-CoV-2, they're not seeing any difference between mask users and non-mask users, end quote. But let's look at the other studies I looked at. They basically came to the conclusion as follows. The evidence on mask use in healthcare settings and risk for SARS-CoV-2 is previously assessed as insufficient as well in regard to a lot of the trials that people like to look at and utilize selection bias. Now, in their case, they came up with the conclusion that basically it was recall bias. Uh, other methodological implementations, other confounders, 
Uh, confounders, for those not familiar, could be things which, for example, if I had a study that said smokers, have, not smokers, you get the point, coffee drinkers have more lung cancer, and we correlate that people drinking coffee have higher lung cancer, well, it could be that coffee drinkers are smokers, and then the smokers are the smoking part of that conclusion, the confounding fact, creates lung cancer. But to proceed, uh, they see the inconsistencies in other studies, so on and so forth, and they're basically, their conclusion was as follows, therefore evidence for various comparisons about mask use in a healthcare settings and risk for SARS-CoV-2 remains insufficient. Again, looking at the date of this research was as follows, December 29th, 2020. And you would think with such research that basically has such a profound impact in all aspects of an individual's life, whoops, here we go. We have more comments. No, that's what we have. How many news outlets do you think would pick up such a study? Because you think the public would want to know, or the news as a service to individuals, so they do know, or so they could possibly maybe take another precautionary measure. I mean, how dangerous would it be, let's say, for example, if masks did not work, but we gave people the illusion they did, and therefore they didn't do other mitigating factors which actually possibly can have healthful impacts, such as maybe supplementation with vitamin D and so, so on and so forth. Well, again, this is an informal conversation, one news outlet. So put it this, this way, the media is not necessarily on your side. Sensationalism, yes. Uh, given a fair and balanced report, you be the judge. Now, the consideration in reference to mask, once again, going back to the, uh, the physics uh, research, is, again, we already know that uh, SARS-CoV-2 is not only micronized, but uh, below 5, it is actually submicronized in a large percentage of the uh, positivity case, uh, areas from 4 mites and so on and so forth that they discovered on materials and floor and so on and so forth. And yes, no deposition. Where is the main entryway for SARS? One of the main entryways for SARS-CoV-2, without a, with a mask, due to the fact that it slows the breathing rate down or the airflow, is actually more hazardous than without a mask at all. Again, I am just here to give you the data as it comes out. You make your own call in reference to what your life choices are. After that, we go back to other people making life choices for us. The effective interventions on COVID-19. All right. These, the researchers here are about as kind as they possibly can be in reference to trying to say, hey, what they call, we call lockdowns, they call non-pharmaceutical interventions, NPIs. Keep that particular term in mind. This is also why, for those that have been following the channel, the data analytics that we look at reference to age, population density, and so on and so forth, so on and so forth, we can't find a correlation per se, except for weird stuff like total test results, which include the positives and the negatives uh, in reference to death. But we can't find really much more of a correlation outside of that. So this is part of the reason why these particular researchers are indicating why we can't find a solid correlation of lockdowns being of benefit. And also, too, it brings up a side note as well. You need a control. Well, you should have some controls or something you could compare your strategy to as opposed to just reflecting on your what's happening in your own country. And they really give a slight towards the fact is somehow we decided not to look at what works for other countries. We only looked at what works in our own country which is weird because that's not science. That's just saying, hey, you know what? Just take it for what it's worth. But here it goes. The interventions, you'll understand more what I mean in a second tell. What they had is they gave a bunch of choices, social distancing occurred, self-isolation, school closures, so on and so forth. A lot of countries, for example, didn't close down schools and so on and so forth. And they are far, faring far better than we are. I mean, not, I mean, faring far better. Uh, than we are. But let's, for example, and a complete lockdown. So what had happened was basically this particular study, the Flaxman et al., 
they just said, you know what? Early in May 2020, they concluded that only one of these, the lockdown, had been effective in 10 out of 11 European countries were that were studied. So by May, they said the only thing that's going to work is a lockdown. And without going into detail in reference to the article, they said a lockdown will reduce the spread by 80%. Well, other epidemiologists had questions in regard to that. This was originally published on 8th of June 2020 and then revisited the 23rd of March um, 2020. And oh, before I begin, wonderful, wonderful uh, brief video explaining some of the intricacies of why the data they say that was being utilized to justify lockdowns is flawed. And it may be kind of tough to find, but I'll have the link for you because the video actually has no tags. Once again, with everything that's going on in the world, do you think that basically what is damaging people on a psychological level will have some actually uh, precedent in reference to basically what's going on? And again, we have a very small audience in this YouTube channel. We're not going to make any changes, obviously. But again, for those interested in data, uh, no, They're, the rest of the world is not interested in basically making people feel better. They may pretend to be on your side, but you know, the proof is in the pudding, if they even use that terminology anymore. But to proceed forward, I'll have the link to the video. Again, no tags, tough to find, but very well liked. And here we go. One of the 11 modeled countries, Sweden, is worthy of particular attention, given that it was the only country in which no lockdowns took place. Remember, we used the data analytics, we used Sweden as a model. And... And you kind of wonder because let's 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 look at this real fast. All right, I'm sure many of you remember this. I bookmarked this. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. That you've been promoting. Do you have any second thoughts? Are you willing to look remember at this data? Remember this from back in October. Did very little. Actually, have a lower death rate than the United States. You know, Senator, I I'd be happy at a different time to sit down and go over detail. You've said a lot of different things. You've compared us to Sweden. And there are a lot of differences. And you said, well, you know, there are a lot of differences between Sweden. But compare Sweden's death rate to other comparable no, uh, uh, Scandinavian countries. All right. What that has to do with anything is basically, uh, how would describe it as, confounding on its own. But, again, let us proceed. Obviously, because the virus must have some sort of territorial um, aversion to Scandinavian countries? I don't know. But that's what they're trying to say, is they did not even allow what they didn't even want to incorporate into the data what Sweden was doing in order to balance out their rationale for lockdowns, which really is extremely irritating because a lot of people have been harmed irreparably in reference to basically bad data analysis and data collection. And that's what the Swedes are trying to say. The Swedes are actually trying to save the rest of the world from what they believe is an unnecessary pandemic mitigation strategy. And they're willing to put themselves out there. I mean, and people are really emotionally attached to this, uh, to the data. And they're really emotionally attached to the outcome of lockdowns working. So much so that we've seen violent repercussions against any individuals would say anything else. But, uh, what we could say is the popular um, mantra. But receive. As we previously shown, the estimated effect of MPIs, non pharmaceutical inventions, interventions, change markedly when the model is not allowed to give the Swedish data the special treatment of the country's specific last MPI parameters enabled. All right. So a little detail, but you've got to understand oh, you know, well, let's, let's just see what we got going on here. You know, if we include Sweden in our model, then our MPI model doesn't work, so we can't rationalize lockdowns. So the best way to really come out with the outcome we're looking for, is let's just discount all the countries which are not doing what we want them to do so we can justify the lockdown. But then after we get the lockdown in place, let's not even look at each other to see how it works. Let's just look at what happens inside the, our own countries and not tell the rest of the world what's happening. And that's, that's kind of, no, bad, wrong, bad. <laughs> bureaucrats. I mean, I'm really, really irritated. Not to make light of it, but yeah, no, they were horribly, as history will show, horribly, horribly uh, 
unqualified to make the rash to make any judgment call whatsoever in the harm that they caused many people through basically um I'm sure they're going to see themselves as heroes because eventually the virus will go away on its own. But however, though, you know what I mean. You know what I'm getting at. But to proceed as follows. The MPI, remember, non-pharmaceutical interventions, it claimed that the lockdown had an indefinably large effect. Indefinable. Identifiable. Identifiable. Now I can't even speak. Identifiable large effect on transmission. They said it's reducing transmission by 81% to percent. Yeah. If they throw out everything else that conflicts with their opinion and only include the ones which fit the model. That's not what you're supposed to be do. We believe the basis of this claim is unclear. And that's an understatement. Quote, uh, flexible parameterization. In particular, we find it questionable to designate a country specific effective parameter to the last non-pharmaceutical invention that was introduced in each country. Meaning, all right, US, you only look at what works inside your own country. US, don't pay attention to Taiwan, Japan, or sort of South Korea or any place else. You just pay attention to yourself. Don't look outside your borders of what's working. You just keep on doing what you're doing. That's basically what they're implying. Proceed. And if I'm wrong, show me data to counter what I'm saying. I mean, I get my own personal bias involved too, but I'm open to basically being questioned in reference to that. But have data, not he said, she said, or others said, to be politically correct, but also basically to say, hey, you know, have data to support that's not a correlation that shows a causative relationship. And people go, well, you can't have a causative relationship to have data. But, you know, they, they have a correlation. And as we go through our heat maps in, in a few minutes, you'll recognize there's very little correlation. At least we look for correlation more than basically looking for our thought leaders. Quote, this has led the authors to go beyond the data reporting the particular interventions as especially effective, the kind of error mistaking assumptions for conclusions. Point said. I can be doing the same thing. That's what we have peer review for. Not to belittle a person or bemoan a person or idea because the best intention may be there. But sometimes it helps to have a friend that can look at something at a different angle before you go jumping out of the plane in a parachute and you recognize you figure out to lock a strap or two. But to proceed as follows. These are the, informa the individuals which conducted that particular study. I want to bring up the author information in particular because it's important to recognize that these are groups of individuals that, that are basically researching this information as opposed to just one mouthpiece. And when it comes to science, there actually is strength in numbers. All right, now let's get into the data analytics as follows. Here we go. I'm going to go through it real fast because I know it gets really kind of boring. But we're, we're here looking for correlations and interesting information. All right, here we go. Let's begin this one. Complete vaccine administration. What I did to give you a little bit of data here uh, as far as feedback of what we did here. Do, 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 do. All right, we pulled in the Pfizer data and the Moderna data. And we basically cleaned up the data frames, uh, basically added population, merged them, or joined them, if you want to be particular. Uh, looked at the second dose is basically administration dose to combine those two those two numbers together. So, you know, it's going to add some confounding because we know Pfizer and Moderna can have different operative effects. Uh, obviously, there's been allergic reactions. And, for example, Moderna has been reported to have also re allergic reactions to people who have dermal fillers. So it's caused people with plastic surgery to endure a little bit of unknown harm. To what percentage, though? I don't know. Uh, but however, though, there's the totals. And now what that did is that gave us the, the amount of vaccine delivered up to date of January 3rd, 2021, which is now. And so up to the population. And right, now here, I'll give you a little bit more enlightening figures. Now we are going to merge other data frames inpatient bed utilization, uh, general and ICU bed utilization between each state. So if you want to look at the data frame right there, that will give you an idea. For example, uh, if you look at California, 86% ICU bed utilization as overall. Now look in particular counties or whatever it is. Uh, in based, uh, inpatient bed utilization. Now keep in mind, this 76 right there historically has been about the exact average ICU bed, ICU bed utilization, oh, not ICU, inpatient bed utilization all of the time. 
sometimes 68, sometimes 76. It could bounce between those numbers. But that's the average. And, and yet, we're claiming this massive lockdown. But we see as follows. Here we go. Uh, combining the data frames now, merging, 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 merging those data frames, merging. And now what we're doing right here, for those not knowing, is we're basically looking at the percentage of people in each state vaccinated based upon the population. I mean, again, follow along. You don't have to know data analytics at all. But however, though, it's important to show our homework, so to say. And uh, that's what it is. And here we go. Now, we'll follow this over time, but I'll save each one of these figures as a picture just to give you an idea. Now, this basically is the hospital to vaccine comparison. So look at this interesting information we can actually uh, basically pull out or mine out of this uh, data. Look at Alaska, for example, uh, as far as percentage of population. Uh, the orange right there is your ICU bed utilization. The blue is your percentage of inpatient bed utilization. So here, for example, 65% would say for Alabama, 85% of the ICU beds are used. California we looked at, we saw it was 86% of the ICU bed used, were used, and therefore we have this like weird sort of no one pays attention to martial law thing going on uh, to flatten the curve, which we've been hearing about flatten the curve. I haven't heard about it since they said only 15 days to flatten the curve. All right, and so there's your inpatient bed utilization of a whole. Remember I said 76% is about average. We'll go backward through the data charts to give you an idea. And, but look at this. Now, look at now, population-wise is interesting, but for example, on a need basis, here we are looking at Alaska, and basically, as a vaccine level of the population, you have a higher percentage of that population that's already been vaccinated. Then you have New York, and it's like right down there. Now, I'm not debating whether the vaccine works or not, or regardless of whether it's safe. I'm just saying if the vaccine's in need, it looks pretty balanced until you go to New York and Alaska. Interesting. All right, but now we go, we'll follow this throughout the weeks. All right, now let's go to the hospital occupancy rates, which is really kind of important. Do, do, do. All right, here we go. Total inpatient beds. Uh, inpatient beds used. Now keep this in mind. Florida, which has been the bane of those which are really pro-lockdown. Look at their inpatient beds. Huge number. Uh, inpatient beds used. I mean, even as a numerical comparison, higher than New York, albeit higher population. Uh, and But as a percentage, it's probably not fair to use it numerically. But again, lower than the other states per se. And uh, inpatient beds used for COVID is the green. Uh, now, again, we're not comparing apples to apples because we're looking at a numerical population. But look at that. Certain areas, for example, are, well, it's, again, comparison. Missouri, for example, you have a, a good breakdown there. Uh, Texas, for example. And that's the thing with it, the correlation in reference to lockdowns. New York and California have almost been maniacal probably the most depressing New Year's Eve party in the history of any civilization, here or other places, <laughs> outside the galaxy. It was bizarre. But you can see right there, for example, it even then, uh, you have Florida doing better overall. But to proceed as follows. I see beds, I see beds estimated, uh, total beds and total beds being used, I should say. And we're doing this because we're trying to bring our bureaucrats uh, to task. I don't, you know, I had to take to say, you know, I have, not that I don't trust them, but, you know, after watching this pandemic, I don't think they really know what they're doing. Uh, I mean, at this point in the game, yeah, it'd be, it'd be kind of comforting to say, yes, our leaders know, or I heard on uh, Fox News, our rulers, actually use the word rulers during one of the interview process. Yes, our rulers know what they're doing. Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to go that far. Let's going to go Braveheart on it from a data analytic aspect. There we are there. Remember 76%? All right, is basically the percentage, the average percentage. And again, California being under, for all intents and purposes, martial law without the military. Uh, they're not really that far above the historical average. 
except Rhode Island, which obviously I can understand the concern uh, for whatever reason. They could be just don't have enough beds and enough people demand the beds uh, or, or staff the beds. Apologies. Once again, I'm trying to be more considerate in my terminology to some of my audience, uh, some of our audience. And so right there. And there you look at that, boom, 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 down the line. And that's what that is for. Percentage of inpatient bed utilization to um, uh, ICU beds. Kind of boring data there. Uh, let's see, data frame, data frame, data frame, data frame. Here's more of a graph. Now, this is important overall because you don't have an historical perspective. And as long as the population does not have a historical perspective, you don't know whether your, your, your leaders are being truthful or not. Well, here is your California. Now, they are correct as far as the inpatient beds being used by COVID. Uh, but again, this ICU bed thing can be not really dramatically. Now, the reason May 20th is because that's actually when they started having the data the data set actually established. I regret it didn't go through last year, so I have actually a solid comparison day by day, by year by year. But here it is, and there it is. Uh, it's it's really tough to grab any of this data. You have to like you have to. I mean, seriously, it's like a needle in a haystack to find anybody that basically for a pandemic that has been so uh, you know affected our lives so dramatically. You think the data collection would be better? It actually really kind of sucks. But here we go. Inpatient beds, inpatient beds being used, inpatient beds being used overall. That's California. Uh, now, yeah, you have more ICU beds being used, I mean, for COVID, but overall, looks pretty flat. I mean, I don't know what happened here. It happened in all the states, but regardless of that, looks pretty flat. All right, that's, this is all, all of our columns, for those not familiar. New York, New York's been going up a little bit, but they looks like they've been freeing up more beds. Now, remember, beds available, depending upon being staffed. And remember, beds can also include, for example, pediatric ICU and so on and so forth. So there could be some uh, confounding factors involved. A little bit of rise in the COVID patient beds. I know that's it's your governor or whatever it is, but these some of these governors are so the sky is falling uh, that it's hurting all of our lives. Florida, again, we'll just call Florida now the party state. I saw them on New Year's Eve, and they actually looked like they were having quite a bit of fun. And here we are, inpatient beds. Their staffing went down, so their inpatient beds went down. Inpatient beds being used, uh, uh, pretty much, look at that, stable. And that's from August. And look at their inpatient beds being used by uh, people testing positive for COVID. You tell me, what do you think? All right, and this is our inpatient bed ICU, uh, ICU utilization numerically, if you want to look at. Uh, the last time it was updated was December 29th. So we're not dealing with necessarily old information and then junk stuff. All right, and then we're going to go, let's go to COVID state testing. So we come up with, yes, and we have scatterplots, paraplots, and lots of other stuff, which I don't want to show you because that would bore you. All right, here we go. Correlation. What don't they find solid correlations with? The correlation here is total test results to death. It, not to belittle it, it's just bizarre. Uh, the correlation rate is 98. And again, California is not the highest correlation mathematically. That's really, really bizarre. Again, I'm looking for an explanation. That correlation was spotted, what, now six weeks ago? Haven't found anybody give me a solid explanation or even try. I see beds in California, uh, without a doubt, uh, has been going up. Doo, doo, doo. And let's continue moving through here. Now, what this means is this. This is this just means it's smoothed. And going, 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 speeding things up. This is a total test result increase, the positive increase. Uh, there's a correlation there. Again, this is death increase, the positive increase. Obviously, you know, red being the death. Oh, yeah, it'd be horrible to have reverse. I should be able to figure that right off the bat. Positive being the blue. Uh, again, it, you know, from a data analytics as aspect, it's very, very dangerous how you present a chart. Hang on, so I'll be right back. Hang on. And I'm back. And just to give you an idea, it's very, very dangerous how you present a chart. This is how visualization could be used as a weapon. 
For example, if I wanted to weaponize uncertainty to basically terrorize a population, this is probably a positive increase, a death increase probably would not be my best choice. However, if I was to use a chart like this, mortality to positive increase. Now keep in mind, this is two different axes. So looking at mortality on this axis right here, 350, to positive increase. And this pick is pretty darn close as far as the correlation on these axes. But this chart right here has a totally different visual impact and emotional impact to the viewer as opposed to this, which this gives the impression it's like people catching the common cold and succumbing to pneumonia, where this one looks like it's the plague. But to proceed as follows. Now we're going to correlations, correlations, correlations. Now here's basically the most interesting part. Again, this has been going on for a few weeks now. The total test result to mortality correlation is still the most unusual correlation I've seen so far. It is so pronounced, and I did this ahead of time just to play it safe uh, for time, that basically right now we're at 330, uh, 33,391,000, blah, 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 442 tests. All right, and we're looking at a death total, a mortality rate, unfortunately, of 26,357. So basically, by the time we get to 35 million, we've been doing this for a while, our estimation would be between 27 million, sorry, 26, now, now I sound like a politician, 26,626 and 27,620. I guess we're going backwards on that one. I have to recheck how I did the figures there. I uh, probably had them inversed. And basically, currently right now, we're at 26,357. So that's where we're kind of shooting for at that point in time. Let me switch that Y and J and X and T in a second. But that's just to give you an idea. It is so pronounced, you could actually work on the slope on the Y equals MX plus B uh, basic algebra. But to proceed as follows. All right, let's go to the correlations, correlations, correlations. This is California. We have a little bit of a drop off in the correlation now between total death results and mortality. So our correlation now is only what was it there for california i think it was i ah, forget it we'll go back down i think it was 0.98 that we're looking at the correlation between uh, mortality and total test results uh, yep sorry 0 0.9807 right there now i'll go back down do, do, do. let's look at the other states i have the program set so we look at the states with the highest correlation to figure out what exactly, uh, where what's unusual. All right, those are things you don't need to know right off the bat, the least of squares for those in statistics. More stuff, more stuff, lots of numbers, looks really cool. All right, that looks cool. Here we are. These are the states basically we're looking at generally have a total test result to mortality correlation, which is really weird because again, it's I look for an explanation, I'd love to have one, my ears are open. Why total test results, which includes positive and negative tests, uh, outcomes, I should say, have such a direct correlation with death? It just, it's bizarre. But again, that's not really, that, that's really the point. The point that we're trying to figure out what mitigation or pandemic mitigation strategies work or, or ineffective. There's our correlations, uh, chunky stuff. There we are, North Carolina, and our total test results to death. Scroll down for expediency and time, just to move things along. All right, there is, again, test per thousand, cases per million. Another interesting correlation. Again, to reiterate, I did it three times now, I put not two times, that this, uh, I was hinted on from Oxford University when they broke it down to test per thousands. Whatever reason, that numerical uh, relationship to cases per million, uh, seems to hold pretty strong. Look at this. Positive increase, the hospitalized currently. That makes sense. Remember, we're dealing with two axes. So increase here, there. Pretty strong, makes it pretty predictable in a machine learning model. Uh, because we have this another correlation. Uh, positive increase, the death increase. Again, remember, two axes. So basically, as we have a positive increase, 
For example, on the red, the death increase is purple, but you see you have close to 6,000 on that level on the positive increase add to a mortality of a little over 50. Uh, but overall, the percentage per positive, presenting the information differently, is dropping. Now that's really prior to the mass administration of vaccines. And this historically has been a case a lot. Uh, basically, vaccines will come out, nothing against vaccines, but often they'll come out after you've had pretty much an overall exposure. And I remember the last report that we came out on Tuesday, they said they found SARS-CoV-2 in sewage water, wastewater, in Barcelona, Spain in 2019, May of 2019 to be more specific. That is just unusual. Nine months, I think it was, it was months before it was in Wuhan. Again, people may say that's well, propaganda, whatever it is, but you know, take it for what it is, unless someone can debunk it. Um, uh, they're gonna hold with that data for now. Uh, May 2019, March 2019, March 2019. Uh, that was uh, Barcelona, Spain. They, they found samples of SARS-CoV-2 in wastewater. How they came to the conclusion, the studies printed out. We can reference it if you should ask. All right, and here's our nice little heat map. Uh, total test results to death. And you get the exact same thing all the way down the line as I pass through this real fast. Mortality percentages are dropping. Uh, it's very, very convenient that a new strain of SARS-CoV-2 out of the 4,000 different strains we already had is being prom promoted in the media so uh, vehemently at the exact same time vaccinations are being uh, introduced. Um, and that's why I want to treat the hospital occupancy rate I want to keep track of. It just, it just sounds suspicious. All right, here we go. All right, not, not conducive, let's put it that way. Uh, open to uh, shenanigans. Total test results, here we are. And to death, again, correlation. Let's move through. Again, da da da, Georgia, so on and so forth. You can stop and look at that for a second. Got it? There. And then California again, because we have something like they call Marsh Law, but they're just trying to keep us safe. And uh, which is very, very, very nice to them. And so this, that, positive increase. Look at the, this is the thing, the, the, it's, again, the drop is so precipitous. And then it just goes up, back up a little again. That's more mortality percentage per positive. Again, you get an antigen, antigenic drift. And again, viruses want to be transmissible. They're not alive per se, but there's some sort of innate intelligence where they want to be transmissible, but they don't also want to kill the host. So it's a natural evolution more than often than not that a virus will increase in transmissibility and reduce itself in lethality. It's un viral behavior is bizarre and for something that we don't consider alive, but there it is. We have a little bit of a drop off, which we always have to have uh, this little rise uh, do, after the holiday season. And there's a psychological reason behind that. Uh, basically, you can probably deduce on your own. And we go, here we go. Uh, there's our correlation, 0.98 to death. And we continue down, New York, New York, New York. They all had the exact same thing, a little slight rise uh, in mortality. And as far as, look at that massive drop uh, in it basically uh, mortality and then boom a little bit of a rise there's your heat map and then in Florida which again is the bane of the media I guess we always have to have some sort of wrestling match mentality when it comes to um, everything uh, Florida Florida correlation that's the positive increase the death increase and we'll give the comparison look at their mortality percentage again per positive regardless of the mitigation factors about the same and continuing down, and yeah, it looks like fun. All right, let's go to COVID world data. How's the rest of the world doing? I'm gonna speed through. Mortality, the new case is smoothed. Uh, mortality percentage of positive cases pretty much mirrors slightly what's happening nationally. Uh, do, 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 do. 
and you already know, for example, our, most of our Asian friends um, have somehow opted out of this pandemic. Uh, and we look at basically Sweden. Here we are there. Sweden, again, we just covered in the research, uh, basically in reference to no lockdown. And yet, and we're looking at deaths per million. So we are comparing most cases. It could be the confounding involved, apples to apples. But they've done nothing. Nothing. And yet they're still far faring better case deaths per million than places that have gone utterly maniacal with like this bureaucratic Munchausen disorder and then populations will reciprocate with some sort of inadvertent Stockholm syndrome. But again, oh look, there's our Asian friends. You thought that was the x-axis, didn't you? No, it's not. That's just to give you an idea. All right, here we go. Proceeding downward. There's our Sweden, still below death. They had a little bit of a rise, so keep that in mind. Uh, so Sweden is blue, USA is orange. Uh, now the USA is orange, new deaths. Again, that's pretty heavy for them, but look at the reporting thing. They, they report, they were separating every three days. Now it's like they're every five days. Uh, if we have any Swedish biostatisticians or epidemiologists, uh, I'd like to know why they decided to change on that. Uh, oh, probably the holiday season. Uh, that explains that. Uh, but here is the new deaths Sweden compared to new deaths USA total, I believe. And then we go down to other statistics, which you're probably not interested in seeing. Correlations, other correlations, global correlations, the world. That's a lot to look at. Life expectancy. Remember we thought it was had to do with age? Now, often it does do with age in the United States, but it has to do with the healthy years more than anything else. Overall case mortality, that's what was in the beginning. Now it's current case mortality as of now, uh, this today, January 3rd, 2021. Population density, remember we thought it was that. And that's the current case mortality based upon the most densely populated areas in the world. Total cases per million, really interesting. United States, Srebrenica, Czechia, Slovenia, as far as cases per million, Luxembourg and Montenegro, much higher. And do, 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 do. there's Sweden, France, interesting enough, deaths per million, Belgium, these are the people with the highest deaths per million rate, United States, right between Hungary and Spain, Brazil, Panama, don't see, don't see a Sweden, there's United Kingdom, don't see a Sweden. All right, here we go, locations. We'll just scroll down here. United States, remember when we first started doing this, it was 3.6 per million. Now we're at 7 point, what do we at that right there? Nope. Yeah, we're at 7.88. I don't have to even change the graph. These are all the countries doing better uh, deaths per million than the United States. You could pause there for a second to look. And then that's it. World mask use. We try to draw a correlation between mask use and uh, COVID, again, if we had to work on masks alone. Here we go, our data analytics. Pretty pair plots, plot, pair plot, pair plot. Don't know what that is. That's a mess up, which I haven't erased yet. Here we are. Correlation between facial coverings and anything on a global scale. Possibly, yeah. Now those are no understand correlation. All right, again, it's it's a weak data analysis because there's so many factors to be involved. We're not weeding through. But even then, I would expect to see higher than maybe a 0.33 to rationalize what we're doing to people psychologically. And here's the countries, mask levels. All the way out here is a four, three, two, one. And these are the countries which are still not acquiesced to mask mandates. Zero, no policy, one recommended. No one's not stopping people from wearing masks. But again, a lot of countries like Japan and places like that, did you think would have uh, more masks or Russia? You'd think they'd be as, just equally as maniacal as the United States or the United Kingdom, but no. And so but this gives you perspective for the rest of the world. And it's important. Mask level four, deaths per million. 
You can tell me if it made a difference. Now, again, not every state in the United States is abided by mask rules, and not, neither is every person. But as a general overall rule, uh, through mitigation policies, that's what we have. United States mass level almost looks like if you had to look at correlation and you wanted to go from devil's advocate aspect, you could say, oh my gosh, the second we raised mass level to four, dysbiosis kicked in, which is a uh, term in reference to messing with people's microbiomes. And let's say, for example, they were right that uh, SARS-CoV-2 is micronized below five and it's slowing down the breathing and creating greater nasal death position. Uh, then maybe per se, why is it right there? Maybe per se, you could say masks have a chance of being more harmful than helpful. Looking close to about, you know, depending on the micron size, and we know it's submicronized now, being aerosolized, that, uh, yeah, a slow breather or a thick mask can result in greater nose death position. And where does the virus like to enter the body through? Nasal passageway, eyes, so on and so forth. So yeah, you can make an argument. The same mask may run a risk, again, without being proven and be reckless for me to say anything else, but the data is there. You make your own decision. All right, going back. And so second we raised to mask level four, can I make that argument? Didn't seem like masks did much of anything. All right, remember, and also too, people that wear, have beards and wear masks, yeah. All right, here we go. Drawing down, Sweden. Mass level non-existent. Again, you have to look at data. Of course, it'd be great to say they're at zero and say to the rest of the world, you know, this is that. But it still went up a little bit. But however, though, again, it's if it's, if it's not going to make any difference, then why have people endure unnecessary hardship? All right, there's that. And there you are in mass level. Still at zero, case per million. Case per million could be asymptomatic, keep that in mind. And you remember my hypothesis before, now that's aerosolized. Crowded testing centers are not the best place to go if you have an aerosolized infectious uh, virus. So again, you can have things aerosolized and not be infectious. So keep that in mind. All right, so Columbia, that was one of the highest ones at the beginning. Do, do, do. Doesn't it seem like the mass level made much of a difference. So they dropped the mass level. They have a little bit of rise there in cases per million and tests per thousand. So, so far, Japan they have not raised there's still out of one. People expect that they're super high, but you know what? Uh, I don't know where everyone's getting this idea that people wear a mask consistently like per batum. Japan, if you want to research, is really interesting. Is there actually encouraging people and giving them uh, incentives to fly so they can keep the domestic airlines afloat? as opposed to us, which appear to be terrorizing people should they step outside their house. Not us. Most of us are great people. Our rulers. Let's go back to that once again. Thank you, Fox News rulers. All right, here we go. Japan, once again, and there's a test per thousand. New Zealand. Wow, it does. They, again, they did a great job. I don't know what happened, uh, but they're staying outside this game uh, regardless. Uh, historians will note what New Zealand may have done so well, but whatever they did, it worked. And if it's superstition, which a lot of this pandemic mitigation appears to be a superstition, then their gods are appeased. And let's try it over here. Finland, da da da. There's your mask level, the one to one. A little increase in death. You know, that's, uh, of course, Fauci's um, Scandinavian country thing because somehow Scandinavian countries are different than every place else. India, mass level four, they didn't mess around. Don't know if it did make a difference or not, but you gotta enforce that law. Mass level case, that's amazing. I, it's again, you, they, you gotta go back down to testing. But, you know, everyone else is going up. They're, it's like, wait a second. That is amazing, data-wise. But look at this, their test per thousand, which is the red. In the case of Vermilion, it that again, if I had an army of epidemiologists, I'd send them in a heartbeat and say maybe it's the curry. You know, it just you got to look at everything. I mean, even if it's green tea, honeysuckle, whatever it is, we discussed before, uh, taking your shoes off if you're going in the house because the positivity rate on the floor is close to 100. percent 
what the heck? People's lives are on the line. Remove the bias, see what works. Even if it sounds silly, if it's something silly, like for example, if it works, what difference does it make? If people think taking vitamin D for whatever reason is silly in order to stop, slow the spread, yet it's the most effective thing in a correlation wise, if out of any of the studies by far, 51% reduction in transmission to have an adequate levels of vitamin D. And how many governments basically uh, have been made that recommendation? Oh, they may skirt across the line on it. It may make a hint, but my gosh, if they could force what they could put over your mouth and at least encourage what they can to put in someone's mouth instead of keeping us running around uh, fighting amongst each other. Spain, da-da-da, there's that. France, remember they were going ballistic for a little while and all of a sudden, look at that, boom, drop, uh, red, test per thousand. Again, look at that. All of a sudden, the tests are coming up like blank. Uh, that's 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 an amazing note data wise united kingdom you do 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 nothing spectacular there italy which i was worried about really kind of because there seemed to be some sort of surgeons uh insurgents no that was an upsurgence let's see there's that and there's that and that's for italy and that's the rest of the data covid's by states and then we'll end after this all right, data frame, data frame, data frame, data frame, data frame, data frame, data frame. Because I really want to look at Florida. Boring, boring, boring. South Dakota, we already know about. Georgia, yeah. The one day they have a, one person gets sick, the whole the mess of the whole thing up. Uh, there we go. California, Florida, New York. And again, Florida is like here we are, and we're looking at death increase total. Uh, Florida, obviously, welcomed into New York just well. California, New York. The people, so the bureaucrats, I think they stayed indoors. And, of course, it's kind of tough to run a country or a state from your basement. Positive or 100,000? I have no clue what this is. That's got to be a data reporting irregularity, but regardless of that, let's look at it for what it is. Even then, whatever this is, still is about the same as California with, it could be asymptomatic, who knows, but it looks like a reporting issue. Uh, deaths per 100,000? Yeah, Florida did all of a sudden rise right in January. It beat New York, and but still on par with California. Again, deaths per 100,000. We're comparing apples to apples. More data, 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 outliers. Uh, positive increases per state. Uh, again, with asymptomatic now being you know, considered a positive, and it's been for quite some time. I really like to have the separation between symptomatic cases and asymptomatic cases. But thank you, uh I'm happy to have the data we have, but with the amount of money being invested into fighting this, that'd be a really nice separation that's easier to find. All right, and that is that for that. Let's review what we had so far as far as what we did review. If I can get on the right picture there. All right, da da da. All right, fourth update on masks. The conclusion, basically, from researchers is inconclusive. Best study out there is the Denmas study. Uh, media, one. Comments, zero. One of the most profound, important aspects in reference to pandemic mitigation being promoted by almost every bureaucrat across the world, except in certain countries. And it literally, again, your conclusion, not mine. All right, again, we looked at that. We've been covered that for a couple of weeks. Uh, interventions of COVID-19, well-researched study, looking at all the data. Uh, somehow somebody, to the Flaxman et al., decided one day to say, hey, you know what? Complete lockdowns seem like they really, really, really will work very, very well. Uh, but let's not look at other countries because that'll make it not look like they're gonna work really, really well. So let's make everyone else's lives miserable. So I don't honestly have some sort of sick Munchausen disorder again, as it says. And of course, giving everyone a bad case of Stockholm syndrome. Grateful just to be able to dance, sing, go to a movie, have a birthday party. You know, we shouldn't be having to plead when the data does not support their assumptions. And that's exactly what they said. He says, when assumptions 
become conclusions. Again, we're exactly where we're at. I'm not going to make any assumptions for you, and I guess you can make your own conclusions. Ralph signing off. It is 157. Thank you very much for listening. I'll talk to you all next week. We'll, care, we'll follow that hospitalization to uh, vaccine uh, percentage thing uh, in the future so we can see exactly if we are going to have a reduction in percentages of hospitalization. And we'll just take it from there. Oh, did I show you this? I thought I did. Yeah, I did. All right. It's late. Catch you guys in a bit. See you then. Bye.